Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here. That is a mining laser and this is my Elite Dangerous Mining Guide. And before we begin, I have to let you guys know that mining is one of the... probably one of the fastest ways of getting money at the early stages. I'm talking about when you're starting off with very basic ships like your Sidewinder and trying to move on to something bigger. And this is going to be a guide of how to do that. Now you can make a very decent amount of money if you're willing to put up with a bit of tedium from here uh, now and then. It's not as easy as hauling cargo, but you don't need as much cargo space to make the money with. So that's kind of why I'd say it's it's probably a little bit better for starting out. So first things first, of course, you are going to need a mining laser. Now, like I said, you can do this in any ship and it can be with any particular mining laser. Now this is a medium hard point, so this is a medium sized mining laser, but you don't need one of these, you can go with one on a small hard point, where I have my pulse laser here. It is a little bit slower, but you can put two of them on and it works as fast as one medium one or thereabouts. The next thing you're going to need, and this is important, is you need a refinery. Okay, a refinery is this piece of equipment right here. Now the basic one is going to set you back 6,000 credits. And that is the most basic form of, of a refinery that you can get. There are some downsides to using it and I'd recommend upgrading as quickly as possible. So right now I'm actually using an upgraded one. The basic one gives you one refinery bin. <coughs> to work with and that can lead to some problems uh, which you go I'm going to talk about a little bit more later on. Uh, the upgraded ones here, for example, the C rating class 2 uh, gives you four refinery bins. Now these of course will affect the amount of power draw that you are uh, going to be using on your ship. Uh, but anything that has more than one refinery bin is perfectly fine. You can see right here this one has four. The basic one has one. The one I'm using right now has three, but that's not entirely needed. Like I'll I'll just show you that here. Um, I just compare this. So the one that I'm using right now is a D rating class two, and that uses 0.22 power and has three refinery bins. Uh, basically, if you can get two refinery bins or more, you're good to go. Um, just be in, bear in mind that it is going to cost more money. But the startup cost on this is actually really small. You, you only need uh, 6,000 credits plus whatever a mining laser costs. This station unfortunately doesn't sell mining lasers and they are they're not found at every station so you're going to have to look around to find one. But once you've got one just keep it uh, until, until you've made the money that you want. Okay so the next thing after that is you are definitely going to need as much cargo space as you can possibly get. So on a sidewinder the default, I believe, is four cargo spaces, and that's okay. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. It's sufficient. Uh, right now on this, I'm using an adder, and I've actually upgraded this to have eight cargo spaces. Um, sorry, ten cargo spaces, which is sufficient uh, for about a decent haul each time. But this is very dependent on what sort of minerals and metals that you get. So the basic outfitting is you need cargo space, you need a refinery, and you need a mining laser. Once you have these three items, you're good to go for mining, essentially. And the next thing you want to be looking out for is the commodities market. Now, this is something that you probably want a screenshot of, actually. If you're looking through the commodities market, you can actually find out how much each item is worth. Now, these are the metals, and below that are the minerals. So these are the relative sell values that you can find for these. Of course, in places where they're in high demand, you're definitely going to see an increase in price uh, or value for any of these things. But for a good amount of profit per hour, you're going to want to stick to stations that are close to your mining spot so you can quickly get rid of it and go back and mine some more. Unfortunately, Elite Dangerous does not allow you to store cargo at the moment. Uh, not like games like EVE Online do, where you can store it in your hangar uh, to be used elsewhere. You have to sell it immediately or dump the cargo, which is unfortunate. So, uh, it's not advisable to try and haul it anywhere else 
in order to sell it because you're just going to wind up using more time and frankly you could spend that time mining instead. So these are the things that you, you definitely want to keep a, a screenshot of. Uh, the metals prices and the minerals prices. This will allow you to quickly check the values of anything that you mine up uh, when you're actually at uh, a, an extraction site. Okay, and then the last thing that you want to be aware of is what sort of system that you're in. Now, the actual economies of the systems or main sort of um, industries in a system will affect whether mining is a viable option or not. Why I say this is any system that has a refinery or an extraction economy usually will have a decent amount of demand for metals and minerals. Uh, refinery especially. Refinery systems will have some form of demand. You can see here there's demand for nearly every single min well actually every mineral is in demand in this system and most metals are also in demand here and some metals are even on sale here. Uh, that's because extraction systems are where the minerals are mined from and refinery systems are where the minerals and metals get refined for use. So they're usually in demand in refinery systems instead. If you can find extraction sites and refinery systems that's the best possible situation that you can probably look at. But I'm going to teach you a couple of tricks very soon that will uh, allow you to mine almost anywhere or in almost any system. So don't go away. <laughs> Alright, so now that we're in space, the one thing that you want to look out for uh, on your navigation menu uh, is this, what I've highlighted right here, is called a resource extraction site. And these are the places where you can go to to mine minerals for the, or metals for the most part. These are basically asteroid belts or anything in space that has a, a value, valuable mineral to, to mine. So this system called Dahan has a resource extraction site. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock that destination and we're going to supercruise our way over. Alright, so now we're approaching the resource extraction site and this is a place that's like any other location is uh, a place that you can drop out a supercruise at and it's it's basically a navigational marker and anybody that's going to mine from the system uh, or from this particular site is going to appear there and what I have noticed recently this it hasn't always been this way but I've noticed recently that NPC pirates and pl even player pirates are starting to show up a lot more around these resource extraction sites so if you're the sort of person that wants to stay away from all of that here's a little trick that you can do to kind of get away from that now if you were to approach this resource extraction site it will give you the option of disengaging super crews as you would for any other location. But there's another way, and this can cause a little bit of damage to your ship, but it should be, uh, for the most part, not much of an issue. Now, bearing in mind this resource extraction site is just below this planet over here, and you can notice that these, this planet here has some very nice looking rings. Unfortunately, the adder's uh, visibility is not fantastic, So, but I hope you can see what I'm talking about. These rings here are basically made up of small uh, meteorites or small debris, and these are mineable. And the thing about these rings, as I'm going to show you in a moment, uh, they, are, they will trigger an emergency stop by going into it. So all you have to do is really just point anywhere on it until it gives you an impact warning. You can see right there at the top... Uh, of the HUD, it's giving me an impact warning. And what it'll do is give me an emergency stop when I uh, come in too close. You will tumble a little bit and it might trigger a bit of heat damage. Might not. Uh, it depends on what sort of uh, heat level you're at at the moment. But that's basically it. And now you can see we are nicely at this extraction site over here. And if we check our contacts menu, there's nobody in range right now. And it's not likely that you're going to be found easily because unless somebody was to, uh, well, by some measure of luck, drop in at this exact location, they're not, not likely to find you. Alright, but bear in mind that that method of approaching extraction sites typically only works if the resource extraction site is actually located on the rings themselves. In some cases, for example, in, on this planet, these rings are actually made 
I think of ice or some sort of frozen material, so they're not actually mineable. But in in a lot of other cases where the extraction sites will actually be situated on the actual rings, then you will be able to use this method to approach them. You can also use uh, the emergency drop function by double tapping the uh, J key or whatever key you've bound to your super cruise and hyperspace button. If you double tap that, it'll emergency drop you anywhere, uh, even if you don't have a destination lock. So bear in mind, you can use these methods to approach extraction sites so that you're not so close to the obvious location. That's the main thing. Alright, so once you've arrived at the resource extraction site, you want to make sure that you're in position to start prospecting. Now, this is not like a lot of other, I suppose, space games that you might have played where it's a simple point and click to mine. This is a lot more hands-on, and as you're going to see, I can't actually target any of these. So, how do I know what mineral and metal is inside each one of these uh, asteroids or rocks? Well, there's only one way to really know, and that is start mining. Now, once we're in range, you can test it, and once you see a scorch mark on the asteroid, you're, you're close enough. <laughs> okay, so then divert power to weapons and start mining. You want to have as little speed as possible. As, in fact, you want to be stationary if possible so that you don't crash into it. Uh, the last thing you want to do is lose the, your cargo by getting crushed by the space rock. Okay, so now you can see there's a little object that's just popped off. Uh, and this is a fragment of the asteroid. And we can actually, if you look at the bottom left over here, that is the composition of said fragments. So you can see there's lepidolite and uraninite, uh, but it's only 6% or 2%. And as much as possible, you want to find asteroids that have reasonably high percentages of the mineral that you're looking for. And that can be a little bit tricky, especially for high value minerals such as things like silver uh, or... Uh, well, I suppose other metals like gold and palladium that are very high value, you want to try and find those in as high percentage as you can possibly find. Okay, so here we can see we've got bertrandite 6% and lepidolite 7%. It's not any better, and this could take some time, but once you've found a reasonable asteroid, start mining as much as you possibly can. You might end up taking on several different types of minerals simply because the type of mineral that you might find may not be as abundant as you would like and there you'd have to split everything accordingly and that's where the screenshot of the prices will come in handy. Alright so here we have one that's lepidolite 8% and uraninite 8% as well. Uh, this is a little bit better but frankly I think it's going to take me hours to find uh, a decent asteroid and I'm not patient enough to go and search right now. So all right, so now we've we've carved off a fragment, and if you look at the bottom left over there, you can actually see that it's well, its health is starting to deteriorate. All the fragments have a limited amount of time they can stay in space before they disappear. So when you carve one off, you want to pick it up as quickly as possible. So how do we do that? Well, you do, p treat it exactly the same as any other bit of cargo. You have to deploy your cargo scoop and fly towards the fragment to pick it up. And as you can see, it's not particularly easy doing it manually. And every time you crash into it, you are going to do more damage to it. So go in very slowly and try to keep it as close to the center as possible. I think I might have just lost this one. Also be aware that there's an asteroid there and don't crash into it. Also, there is a neat little feature, any... So I'll just switch that off for the moment. Any asteroid that you have mined from actually appears on your sensor right here. So you can see there's a little outline of a rock over there. That's the asteroid that you last mined at, so... But if you go around prospecting for a while, you might find you have a lot of asteroids actually on your sensors. And that could be a little bit tricky. So just try to find the one that was closest to you so that you don't lose your your place.
Okay, so now you can see that it's flashed up the words resources unallocated, and there's a reason for that. Uh, when we go into the cargo, now you can see the addition to the cargo menu. We now have this refinery, and if you are running the basic refinery, you're only going to see one bin below that. What I mean by that is you can see right below there are three slots that say empty, and that's the space that you can keep a partially refined fragment in. All of these have a particular purity, so everything else, for example, this is 8% lepidolite. If it was only 8% lepidolite, that means there's 92% uh, of other material that we are going to vent into space. So to make up 100% and then get one unit of the mineral, you have to make uh, one of these. So, for example, now I have three bins available, I can refine, so you can see when I hit refine on that, it goes down into the space below, and that is now 8%. So once that reaches 100%, it will transfer into our cargo hold. And we can do the same for the uraninite over here, and then it will vent the waste matter into space. Now if we, if for example I decide, oh I don't want lepidolite, it's not really as valuable for example, I can choose to vent it by hitting this button over here, and so on. Or you can even choose to vent all of it and start again. So that's how the refinery kind of works. So that, uh, because of that, you are going to want to find as high percentage as possible so that you have to carve off as little fragments as possible and make as much as you possibly can. Because if you want to sell the metals and minerals, you can't do that unless it's inside your cargo hold. You can't sell something that's in your refinery. So you have to make sure it reaches 100% first. Now, uh, some systems have particular high-value minerals in them, and those are things that you probably want to make uh, a, a note of when you go into them. For example, this area that I'm in uh, has gallite, uraninite, and lepidolite predominantly, but it also has uh, silver, which is actually very high value. Silver can fetch, I believe it's 5,000 or 2,500. I can't remember the actual price off the top of my head, but it is one of those prices per unit, and I've got 10 spaces, so I could potentially, if I ha get 10 units of silver, I could be looking at uh, 25,000 or 50,000 credits. So it's all dependent. Oh, there's also indite down here as well. So those are the things that you want to keep an eye out for. So that's really it for mining. It's all a matter of kind of prospecting, probing each asteroid until you find the mineral that you're looking for, or metal, and then using your refinery. And once you have a full cargo hold of the mineral that you want, then you can go back to any station and sell it there. Like I said, you want to go to the places that are as close as possible to where you're extracting, because at the moment you can't stockpile these things and then sell them en masse, you, and you can't even keep it in a ship's inventory uh, while it's stored either. So once you reach the station, it's best to just try and sell it off before, before uh, going out to mine again. And that's uh, that's really about it. Mining itself can be very profitable if you are in a high value mineral or metal rich area. But other than uh, f as far as time usage goes, there's a lot of I suppose waiting time because it's it's a matter of finding the right rock and getting the right mineral. And that's the only way you can make it profitable, but that being said, if you why I would actually why I would recommend this uh, as a means of making money for a newcomer is because once you have put down the money for all the equipment, everything that you mine here is profit. Even if it's, for example, uh, let's see what's on this rock. Let's just uh, pull something out over here. Okay, so here we have uh, Lepidolite and Uraninite. Most minerals are not high value on their own. 
There are a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, most minerals are not high value. But even then, anything that you sell is going to be profit. So if you really need credits, this will be the fastest way of getting some credits. And that's really about it. That's the, the main thing about that. The rest of it comes down to how much refinery space you have and how much cargo space you have at a time. And uh, how much patience you have. But that's really all about mining. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Uh, be, be sure to leave a like if you found this helpful at all. And thank you very much for watching. My name is Panzer. Good hunting and mining out there. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>